Did I just say welcome back to McLean's TV? My uncle Liam Beckett, all dressed because he's a very proud daddy. Because uh, later today he's going to the graduation for his daughter, who is graduating with a master's degree. Isn't that fantastic? I don't know where she got the education from. Not from him, but there you are, Liam. We're here for the Irish League, and at the start, uh, we, we, I remember uh, earlier that before the a match was our ball was kicked in anger. We went down to the Oval and did a piece with yourself there. You talked about how the fact you felt it would be a very interesting Irish League. It has turned out to be, a, I find it a very exciting league, both top and bottom, because there's teams vying either way. Predictions wise, we're not too far away, Adrian. Good day we had at the Oval. The weather has changed somewhat, obviously, but we had a really sunny day at the Oval. And I did pick Linfield. I just felt that it was going to be too big of an ask for Cliftonville. Uh, and at the very outset of the season, OK, Linfield had an awful start to the season. But I think you could see what I meant when I said that to win back-to-back -back titles is a big, big ask. And where Cliftonville won the, the, the championship last year playing a superb brand of football. And if anybody was entitled to win a league, it was them last year. They were fantastic. Struggled this year. Starting to get it together now. Uh, and they're up in there. And I think I maybe said that Linfield, Crusaders, Cliftonville, that would be, it would be among those three. And I still keep that uh, prediction. It will be among Linfield. Cliftonville and Crusaders, I think, will lift the main silverware this season. And the festive period, you know, as we call it, you know, the the the, the dark, wet, heavy pitch <coughs> winter matches. It's going to be it's going to be key to the, the fortunes of those three top sides. As you say, Cliftonville are beginning to motor. Crusaders have a great unbeaten record, and Linfield are Linfield. Yeah, and because there's a flurry of matches now, and because, as you quite rightly say, the grass pitches will be heavy. Uh, you do suffer injuries. You can have players now. They're highly, they're highly toned now. The, the footballers, uh, an awful lot of uh, emphasis is put on physical fitness. And if things aren't right, they can tear a calf muscle, do a hamstring, do a groin, and the heavy pitches will take its toll. That's where you need a squad, Adrian. And that's where you very often find, if you look back in history, you'll see that a lot of teams. Uh, throw down the gauntlet over the festive season because they've got the squad to cater for all those injuries all those red cards, yellow cards, suspensions and that's why I keep thinking Linfield bar a catastrophe have to be the favourites for the league because they have the squad they have a big squad and they have a quality squad some others have maybe quantity but they might lack a bit of quality whereas Linfield I think have quantity and quality and they're adding to it with uh, we presume uh, uh, young uh, Kelleher from the Glens and also Spruill has now the former Northern Ireland international has now signed uh, until the end of the season uh, you know like you know they, they just keep adding quality well they do and, and that sends a message out as well and I'm sure there are other teams that are envious of the fact that you know they can just go and sign Ivan but it's inside the, the player wage cap uh, Lumfield have made that quite clear so they're perfectly entitled to do that but it's a great addition and you know if ever you needed if you're a boxer and you get a punch in the mouth and you're sort of getting to your feet again and they hit you another punch in the mouth uh, you don't like it and it's another punch in the mouth to some of the teams in around them saying we mean business we've brought Sproul he's a pacey lad I can remember even before he left here you know he was a, a real star in the making and uh, and he's uh, the, the Sproul family are all very pacey they were all born with pace uh, in fact, I used to have his brother Andy with me at Institute, only Andy wasn't as technically gifted as Ivan was because he used to arrive in the penalty area as well at 100 mile an hour, but he, he generally came without the ball. And I used to say to him, well, could, could you maybe arrive in the box at 90 mile an hour and bring the ball with you the next time? So, <laughs> Ivan's a different Always good advice. <laughs> <laughs> I says just come into the box at 90 mile an hour but bring the ball with you this, uh, this time but they're a great family Ivan will be a great uh, he'll, he'll, he's that type of player Sproul who will put the, the fans on the edge of their seats Adrian he, he'll drop the shoulder he'll knock it past the full backs I know if I was playing full back today uh, I certainly wouldn't fancy meeting him I think he's 32 years of age still very pacey uh, good feet uh, but you, you know Liam you, you, you talk about the three uh, protagonists at the top and we could do a story about every single club I think Glen Torn have done well at certainly uh, you know fighting fighting above their weight and I think I th that Richard and Gannon Swifts you know they've been a real they've been fantastic but do you know I think Glen Torn deserve tremendous credit because they've had to slash their overheads because let's be honest they were guilty of some very bad housekeeping at the Oval mm -hmm. in fairness to the board that are now there and in fairness to the management that are, that are now, they're now cutting their cloth according to their means, which I applaud them for. 
And that's why I reckon they would struggle even to make top six. But they're in there, they're in around fourth place, I think, from memory. And that means that, you know, a tremendous credit has to go to Eddie Patterson and his coaching staff. But not only that, to the board at the Oval, who have finally said, listen, we've got to do this, and we've got to do what we can afford. We'll do it as the rest of the clubs are doing it, we'll spend what we can. And to be where they are under all that, and then to lose the players that they've lost, you know, in the close season, and now to lose Callagher, and particularly in the fashion and what and the, than what he has left, mm -hmm. uh, tremendous credit to Glen Torn. You mentioned Dungan and Swifts. I keep thinking there should be a medal struck, and I say it all the time for the McGarry family and them up there, and Darren Murphy, and the people who run that club. Not blessed by a, a big crowd, not a tremendous fan base at Dungannon, very much like Institute, tidy little ground, great club, uh, very proud club, but they can't really go out and spend bigger, they can't offer mm. big wages. So to even be in the, the, the Premier League and to be in it constantly the way they are, I think it's an absolute credit to Dungannon Swifts. I can't really mention every club, but you know, credit as well to Balna Mallard. I look at them, they've got a lovely setup too. I think, we talked, again, yeah, I think yeah. we talked about Balna Mallard, Adrian, yes. where I said they may struggle this year uh -huh. because they came in last year like the Roy of the Rovers. Best pitch in the league by far. Uh, Fantastic facilities. Fabulous facilities and fabulous people down there. And I thought they would struggle this year, and I have been right. I, I said in our, our pre season uh, interview that we did, I think that Balla Mallard would struggle this year. And they have. Uh, they don't have the firepower. I think if you check the league stats, they're probably the worst scoring team in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't score goals, you don't win matches, Adrian. Now, up your direction, um, you know, you've got Balamina, you've got Korean. I feel sorry for Korean, particularly, and for, for Oren Kearney, because. Like they've been a wee bit unlucky, you know what I mean? Like you know, and he's a he's a great manager. I, I feel a wee bit unlucky for him, and I hope he stays. And I hope that the uh, Korean and Balamina, you know, get a fresh, uh, a fresh wave of, of enthusiasm and a couple of results, you know, over the festive period and into the new year. Yeah, uh, both of those clubs are very close to me. If I come out my front door, it's nearly a toss of the coin. What's the the, the closest to me? Uh, and I've a lot of affinity with both clubs, and I'm very well treated at both clubs, Adrian. Cole Rain will be disappointed. You come out of a front door, do you? So well, you know, <laughs> to the side so of the, the house, really. You know. oh, yeah. Sorry, that's right. Yeah, so, uh, right. And right, once I step onto the milk crate, which we use as a step, uh -huh. uh, and get down on and see the, the, the civilization, uh, uh, they're both close to me, and I would love to see, with all due respect and with all respect to the, the Belfast clubs, I would love to see a country team, you know, coming right up in there and maybe you know, knock on the door and saying, We want the league this year. Uh, at the minute, Cole Rain are not going to do it. They're short of some players. But Oren has been working under a, a restricted budget. They're like all the rest of the clubs. They're finding it tough to make ends meet. So they've had to cut their cloth according to their means. I applaud them for that. Sometimes fans, uh, fans don't show the patience, Adrian. You know, fans become impatient. They don't see what goes on behind the scenes. The Premier League uh, chairman. Correct, that's the, right. The, the yes. Sack, sack managers, you know. Exactly. Balamina have bad start to the season. They've started to sort of get a few results together. Results, winning can become a habit, but losing can become a habit. At the minute, it's becoming a habit for Cole Rain losing. Balamina have got a wee streak together. They've lost in the semi-final just to Crusaders in extra time. And they lost in the semi-final of the County Antrim Shield as well. So there, there's positive signs there. And all I would say to fans are be patient and look for that one word that I always use, progress. If you can see progress, and it's not always on the pitch, Adrian. Mm -hmm. It could be behind the scenes in the academy, in the bank statements. There's progress. If that's being made, and the, the people who run those clubs will know if progress is being made. And if that's being made, be patient and give the lads a chance. And I, I think to a, I, I couldn't, you know, uh, go on without mentioning Warren Point and Orge, who you said at the very start of way back though that they would struggle. I, I know they're struggling, but they played some football, Liam, and got some great results. Uh, they have. Uh, but what worried me, uh, they, I'd never thought for one minute they would come in and do a Balna Mallard, the way they came in and took the league by storm. Because Balna Mallard had a base. And what worried me about Orge and about Warren Point, Adrian, was the fact that they were nomads. That they had no... They were of no fixed abode. And every game them two clubs play is away from home. They're not at home. So that takes its toll. It's an awful jump, Adrian, to try and compete at Premiership level from Championship 1. But when you don't have a home to go back to and say, well, next week we're at home, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll dominate that game. When every game's away from home, it's a struggle. And that's why I reckon that Warren Point and ours, I still maintain what I said at the pre-season interview we did, those two teams will struggle. 
We're facing into the new year, obviously, and uh, away from the Irish League, we have the Blue Ribbon competition, the Irish Cup, no sponsorship. Liam, what on earth is going wrong or what has gone wrong to allow this situation to happen? You know, Adrian, the, the Irish Cup holds lovely memories for me because I was very lucky to won it twice. But it bears no resemblance to the competition that I won. The Irish Cup now, no sponsor. The League Cup, no sponsor. The County Antrim Shield, no sponsorship. And to have an Irish Cup, which is, the you're quite right, the Blue Ribbon knockout competition in Irish League football, to have no sponsor, I think is unforgivable. And I can only point the finger in one direction, and that's our governing body, the Irish Football Association. I've said it before, and I always say what I think, Adrian, you know that. And for that to be allowed to happen, given the tough economic times that we have in our country, that's bad governance. Liam, people say to me, you know, we're, we're in the middle of a recession and, and sport, everybody gets a hit. But I look at all the other sports, and they've all got sponsorship. So people have gone out of their way to ensure that sponsorship has been retained, or they, you know, like I'm talking about, everybody's struggling to get money. I just for the like, okay, the league cup maybe so on county and maybe to an extent they can give them a buy ball, but I cannot believe that the Irish Cup is not sponsored. No, and you know there are sponsors out there. You're quite right. All the other sports seem to be, be but if you were a, a businessman or you had a company and you wanted to invest in sport. So bad has our record been at the Irish Football Association that we've basically become a laughing stock. We have shot ourselves so many times in the foot and making bad decisions and, and dismissing people that have been extremely costly. Uh, those there have all built up and they've painted a picture to so many people out there that our governing body are incompetent. And that's not too strong a word, by the way. Incompetence, when that smacks of incompetence, that does not send out the positive message or initiatives that would attract sponsorship to me. If I had a company, or I was a businessman, or I had money to spend and I wanted to invest it in sport and I love sport, I would think twice about putting it into Irish League football because there's always seems to be some disagreement and that all comes from the top, Adrian. Liam, that's very harsh for a man like you who, uh, you know, has sport written all over you, you know, because should it be the bikes? It doesn't matter what sport, you like sport, but your your passion is is it the bikes and football. So when it comes from you, surely people in control in the power base uh, should be listening to the likes of yourself and saying, can we not take the positivity, or not the pod, but, you know, the... the, the enthusiasm yeah. of the likes of a Liam Beckett let's get together and get and get five or six people who, who love the sport and let's see what they can do to see if we can get sponsored you know Adrian we, I, I don't think in terms of all I look at at football matches now if you see the clips on the TV or you see a picture in the in, at the weekend in the newspapers all you see are upturned plastic seats you know if you look at the background now we will never get back to the days when I played, when we had big crowds at Irish League when games. When I had scrapbooks. And when you had... Aaron Saturday night and had pictures when, when, when uh, Dennis Guy and Dave... Yes, and the boys yes, the yes. And, you know, the, the, the pitch, the, the crowd was stuffed. Uh, was fantastic. Stuffed. You, you will never be... We will never get back, Adrian, because, let's be honest, in those days, there were there were less other alternative attractions. You know, Sky's beamed in now uh, to, to all the TVs on a Saturday. Some of the bars are sitting packed because if it's a wet day... Uh, they're going to sit in there and have a beer and, and have a bet, maybe nip up to McLean's and do a wee punt and then sit at the f a big open fire and have a pint instead of going down to a dilapidated stadium uh, wh where lack of investment has really showed uh, over the years. Again, government uh, were going to invest in football, then they pulled out because, as they said themselves, incompetence. Uh, and and uh, lack of lack of belief in the governance of our sport. So now I point the finger solely at the Irish Football Association, but you can't always be you can't always be criticising Adrian unless it's constructive criticism. And I would always offer constructive criticism, not because we're in front of a camera, not because I would maybe do a newsletter column on a Monday. It's because somebody affords you the. The, the, the availability of a pen and paper, it's not fair to take cheap shots at people. But this is not a cheap shot. This is from my heart. This is a sport I love, football. The investment in football is diminishing day by day. 
The attraction to fans is diminishing day by day. But could I say in their favour, Adrian, they have now introduced a new body called the Northern Ireland Football League, Niffle as they call it. And I am full of admiration for that move. And I think that that will be probably our best opportunity to turn things around. There's good people on that board. I, I hope they're successful. I think what happened actually with the Irish League is that they were going along in such a position of strength for so long that they thought, well, sure, look, it'll just, it'll be, yeah. it'll fall into place, but only to make an effort. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, people, I'm sorry for using the cliche, took their eye off the ball. Yes, and I think the emphasis has been too much on international football. I think the domestic scene has been neglected. And, and you know, that's you're quite right. That hasn't been going on for 12 months. That's been going on for years now, Adrian. And the decline has been gradual, but it's there. And unless somebody does something and does it urgently to arrest that slide, the appeal factor has gone. The love with the game has gone. Uh, the whole thing is dying a slow death. And again, I can only say that I think the new Northern Ireland Football League and the people that are in it, they're enthusiastic. The chairman's a fellow called Andy Johnson, uh, who I think is full of enthusiasm. They have Peter Dornan enlisted as to give practical input, which is crucial. Uh, decisions, Adrian, to remedy situations are not always found in boardrooms by men in suits. You need a practical input. You need to speak to the fans. Mm -hmm. What sport? Any sport without fans, Adrian. Yeah, you have right, got yeah. to have a practical input. I think that Peter Dornan can add that practical input and he can let them see. And I've, I've, I've had a few chats with Peter and we'd be both singing of the same hymn sheet in terms of what's needed in the game. It will not be a fast process because when it's, something has been let go and slide as far as this has, it's going to take a bit of time to get it back. We'll never get back to the days we had, but I think they've geared for maybe a 15% increase in attendances mm -hmm. in the next four years. I think that's a realistic uh, assumption. And I think if they continue the way they're doing, and they are, Adrian, what I have always preached, they're going out to speak to the people at grassroots yeah, level. People are kind of, eh? The supporters, the boys that go in and give their tenor every Saturday to get into a game and are treated like crap, you know, <laughs> and, and, and taken for granted. And they're standing with a tenor nowadays wondering, you know, do I go in there? I could have done with a loaf. What will I do? And an awful lot of them choose to go to the match, and I think they've been treated as second-class citizens. Well, the only thing I can say, Liam, as, as forceful as ever, if you do go to Lingan and pay your tenor, get a burger, they're absolutely beautiful in Lingan. So Joel Tiger, you know, always <laughs> is.